the Joe Rogan experience. He, you, ma- he made this dope car. Were you nervous about beating Big J? No. Leno? I'd met him before. He's really nice. He's I, always been nice. I know, but he's like a comedy, man, Massachusetts comedy god. Yeah. You know, the Tonight Show, and then now this car god. So yeah. he's like two loves. He, he uh, does have that. But man, he is so much more comfortable and like happy mm-hmm. talking about cars. Yeah. When he was on the Tonight Show, he's basically like, you know, hey, here's this guy. You, oh, you, yeah, you ever hear the Hicks bit? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. With Joey Lawrence. Hey, yeah. you got a girlfriend? <laughs> well, sort of. Kind of. Uh, she doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He pulls out a gun and blows his brains out. His brains right. form an NBC peacock. Yeah. Because he's a company man to the bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got an ooze in his mouth and he keeps changing clips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the older guys like Leno and Seinfeld, Ooh. they're so much more zen now they don't have to instagram and all that shit yeah, they don't care true. they don't podcast they don't do any of this shit they don't do stories and tweets yeah. and they seem like i've hung out with Seinfeld. i don't want to say we're buddies but i've hung out with him a few times because of comedy and he's like wise and he does he does tm you know mm. and he doesn't drink and he's like centered and he's got a family and he loves comedy and he's got his money and it's just he's he's a good guy to look up to as a as a as a comedian and like a business person mm. where you want to be and, and as a man where you want to be in life and how you want to be and what you want to be like mm. like did, did I, have you heard about how I met him no oh dude I mean he was my guy like I was doing him when I started and it was embarrassing did you do a guy in the yeah, beginning yeah I did Jenny okay I caught myself on stage once going oh yes dude I sounds did sounds exactly like him I did an open mic in New York and in New York they were ruthless and uh, I went on I was walking to the mic and some kid in the back went and it fucking crushed me because he was mocking me, it leveled me because he was right. And I, after the, ever since that day, I, I chewed him out on the mic, but I also changed my ways because it hit me right to the core. Mm. And uh, so you know, whatever. I'm doing, I'm doing four sets in a night, and I run over to Gotham, and they go, "Hey, slow down, buddy." And you know, when you got four sets, you got to make those times, or else right. it's like dominoes, you lose them all. And they go, "Hey, slow down, Seinfeld's on." I go, "Ah, oh, damn." I mean. That's how jaded we are as comics. The biggest comic on the planet is on. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Right. I could sit down and watch him, but I'm like, I got to make my shows. So they go, don't worry. I think he's going short. So he gets off, and I and they go, you got to follow him. And I go, fuck. That's bathroom break for most people, you know? Seinfeld's done. We're not going to watch the next douche. So he's walking past me off stage. I'm walking on, and I go, you still got it. And he goes, hey, I like your stuff. And he just said that, like, in passing. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I figured he wouldn't even acknowledge me, you know. And I'm freaking out. So now I go, and it's for Merrill Lynch or something. It was like a corporate kind of thing. So you had to be clean. So I go up, and I'm I'm beaming from this Seinfeld compliment that I just fucking level the room. I just It's coming out of me. It's oozing out of my eyeballs. And I killed. And turns out he was watching. So... Not only did I have to go after him, but I had to be clean, thank God. I have, like, eight minutes on school shootings, pedophilia, <laughs> and midgets. So, like, I had to be clean, and it went well, and I got off. And so I was like, oh, that was fun. Let's go to the next set. And he goes, hey, he came out of the shadows. He goes, let's go hang out. So I go, oh, my God. And it was like a hot lady. You know, when you have a good set, you got a little juice with her. Yeah. I, I would never have anything to do with this lady without comedy. And we go in the green room. We talk for an hour and a half. I'm shitting myself for the first 10 minutes. He's, he's my hero. I grew up watching with my family. Must see TV. NBC, Thursday nights. And we're the first 10 minutes, I'm shitting. Because, you know, you know this guy's face. You know his voice and everything so well. I know everything he's done. I've read his biographies and shit. And then after 10 minutes, he's just a comic. He's just a Long Island car guy, baseball guy, comedy guy. Wow. And it was just super cool. And we talked... And he goes, uh, eh, take my number. And I go, I'll never, I'll never call. He goes, use it, use it. And uh, that was it. We just wow. texted a little. And then as he was, as I was leaving, he did a bit that uh, was new. And I go, hey, I got a tag for you on that cemetery bit. And he goes, ah, whatever, take it easy. Next day, what do you got on the cemetery bit? Mm. Now we're texting, and I had nothing. Yeah. So now I had to go write a bit. <laughs> you know, I had to write a bit in the time. You didn't really have anything? I had nothing. I was fucking with him. So now oh. I'm writing a cemetery bit. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm Googling cemeteries <laughs> and shit. I don't know anything about cemeteries. So I came up with some headstone pun bullshit, and I sent it to him, and I could tell he was like, ah, that sucks, blow me. And then uh. I happened to say, I tried to save it. I wanted to keep it going. It's like talking to a supermodel. Right, And right. I was like, uh, but you don't want to step on Carlin's cemetery bit and he goes wait what's that so i sent him that clip and now we're going back and forth about carlin and then he and i go i think he's better than Pryor. and he goes what are you crazy so now we're going on a, a carlin Pryor fight and we just fucking had it we 
Two hours of texting. It was amazing. Wow. Why didn't you just call each other? You could have got that conversation done in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for a fucking text message while you're also watching TV. I know. He's 65, too. He took forever to get the, um, the words out. But probably has to use the glasses. Yeah. But I didn't, wanna, I didn't want it to end. I was happy it was long. So, yeah. So now- uh, Your besties. I wouldn't say that, but I mean- Pretty close. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say pretty close. I'm closer to you than I am to him. Oh, you know, it's one of them weird ones. Yeah, you don't want to bother. And, yep, I get it. And then I you don't want to come on too strong, where he's like, "This guy's up my ass because oh, I'm many famous." Must be bothering that guy exactly. All day long. <laughs>